In the first tutorial, we were looking at what is Docker. So generally, we determined that Docker allows us to build, ship and run software in any location that has Docker. One of the core features of Docker was this idea of containers. So in the previous tutorial, I explained and gave you an overview of what a container was. So an enclosure for holding a product or a package, or we could look at it as a a way of packaging applications into an isolated container. So the benefits of having a container was that we could generate and build containers which we could share among other developers to ensure that we're all working from the same, for example, software versions or package versions. We're all using the same dependencies and the same base operating system layer. And that just provided us a better consistency and a way of sharing and developing a piece of software in a much more controlled state. So if you're not too sure what a container was or is, then please have a look at the previous tutorial where I go through some of those basics. In this tutorial, I wanted to further establish the idea of containers and then also bring in the idea of something called images and layers. And really what we have here is, are the core concepts of Docker, containers, images and layers. Core questions to answer in this tutorial are what are images and uh, what are layers in terms of uh, Docker containers. So in addition to that, how do these layers and images relate to containers? So another quick recap here, we've got our hardware, our computer hardware, for example, we install an operating system on top of our hardware and then we install Docker within our operating system. And then Docker then manages, allows us to build, create and manage these containers. And within these containers, we could install software. For example, if we were going to develop an application that requires a database, Python, Redis, and for example, some sort of server, uh, we could then of course do that and contain these application within containers and then share them with other developers so that we're all running from the same versions of software. But what is a container? I mean, technically, what is a container? Well, here we need to look and focus on images, layers and containers in order to answer that question. I think this is best done by first of all, placing an image in your mind or building up an image here. So let's just imagine we want to build a container. Okay, so we actually want to build something. So we start off by building an image. So this image is made up of multiple layers. So the first layer being, for example, some sort of operating, operating system layer. And then we add, for example, eventually a MySQL database inside of this image. And this is all contained in this, what, we call, what we're calling here an image. So we have all these different layers of software that we have in this image. Now, what we do now is we allow Docker to run the image. So this view here really changes our idea of what a container is, because now we can say that a Docker container can be viewed as, for example, a Docker image in execution. And I guess what I mean by that is that we build Docker images, but we run Docker containers. So our image basically gets run by Docker and then we call it a container. So there are some important differentiation points to make here between an image and a container. Um, and that will come, that will get drawn out as we start talking more about containers and images and starting with images. But essentially here, an image is going to be a, a file which we're going to be working with in the background. And then we're ready, we run it with Docker, then it becomes a container. And when it's a container, it will work and act slightly differently from when it is an image, for example. So that maybe just complicates things a little bit more here. But the idea here is to, to know the terminology, which is we build an image and then we run the image in Docker, it becomes then a container. If we were to think of this in object oriented terms, programming object oriented terms, the image would be, be our class and then our containers would be our instances of the class. So in that way, we know that we can change the class if we want to and add to the class. And then our container will inherit from that class all the different methods 
from our image or our class here at the top. And then we also know that we can then overwrite and we can change our instance of the class. And similar to here, this instance here, in that we can add to the container if we want to, but it doesn't change the class, the original class or the original image at all. Sorry, I'm talking object oriented programming here, mixture. Um, but you can apply the same principles here with this idea of the image and container. So as you might imagine, running or building an image in Docker is fairly straightforward. Uh, we can do this in many ways. For example, we could run it by hand or build it by hand. Uh, we could, from an existing image that we can download, we can extend the, the image if we wanted to. Uh, we could also use a, a CM tool. So here I'm referring to a configuration management tool. So we can collect an existing Docker file or Docker uh, image, and we can then utilize a number of different configuration management tools to then configure it. And another approach you might want to take, for example, we have a scratch image. So a, an existing image or a blank image, whereby we then import a set of files into that image and then run it as a container. So we can probably better describe what an image is now. It's a collection of file system layers and metadata. I guess that's a fancy way of saying that it's just a collection of files. So I guess why we could say that it's a file system or a collection of file systems is we could think of these layers as independent layers. So we install MySQL, that'd be a separate file system layer. And then the, under, the underpinning layer here in our image would be a very kind of baseline, slimline um, operating system, which we can sort of change and choose as we like. And then together, these layers then are run by Docker as a container. Of course, remembering this fact that we build images and we run as containers. So far, I've been a little bit inconsistent with my terminology, but hopefully now things are starting to shore up. So the idea of a container now, in different, which is different to an image, is that a container is a running instance of an image. I think that's what we've defined here. And we can run multiple containers from the same image. By running multiple containers or containers, um, from an image, we, we're never affecting the image integrity. Um, so the image, however we've set it out originally, won't get changed at all um, by the container. So I think that shores up what a image and container is. And that leaves in my mind a little bit more to talk about in terms of layers. So we've got the general ideas of what a layer is. We've got layers of software, say, inside of our image. So we work in that type of principle, but let's have a look at what a layer can offer us or some of the benefits of utilizing layers. So one of the core um, theoretical concepts here or principles of utilizing layers or benefits of utilizing layers is this idea of copy on write mechanism. So this is uh, an example here. Imagine we've built an application, a shopping application, if you like. We've got our base layer OS, our standard base packages in our image and then we put in the node server inside of our image and we've got this other layer here which is our application so that's all nicely packaged in our image and then we run it with docker and it becomes a container so if we were to for example scale this up every time someone wanted to utilize this container they could make a new instance of the container right or the image sorry so we have multiple containers of the same image so one of the problems with that is that you can quickly see if this was scaled up to 100 or 1000 or 10,000, that this is going to use a lot of resources because here I'm making copies of uh, our stack here of our layers. And you can imagine that's going to take up a lot of resource in terms of storage. So here Docker layers are going to help us manage this problem of multiple containers by utilizing this principle of copy on write mechanism. And that's gonna reduce the amount of disk space required. So the general principle here with copy on write layers is not to replicate all of the layers again. So this app node and base layers, the idea is to extend almost. So here, for example, these blocks on the right hand side, they represent 
current uh, running containers. So here, just to reiterate, each block here represents a running uh, container file. And these files here are going to include or represent any file differences from the original application or layers here. So a basic kind of example here, I go ahead and I, I use this application and then I make changes to the app here and this is represented here in yellow. So I'm still using this stack here and you come along and you're using this instance here and or this application and you make some additional changes and the changes that you make are stored in this layer here, this green layer. So this approach, as you might imagine, instead of replicating all these layers here and giving everyone a, a, an individual instance, by utilizing this copy on write layers technique, we're utilizing much less disk space. So this is a general approach or a general default approach that Docker utilizes uh, to overcome some of the scalability issues. So let's talk a little bit more about Docker layering. So we can think about layers as shared libraries in that layers can be shared across multiple running containers. And that's a really important principle to generally understand because if we can share layers between containers, it can potentially mean that we can scale up very easily. So again, I'm super generalizing here, but for example, if we were to, to deploy our container, say on AWS services, and our container had a consistent amount of RAM and hard drive space. After a certain amount of time, as more users start to utilize this container, obviously we run out of resources. So generally speaking again, what we can do is well, we can share these resources, these layers across to another container, which again has its individual uh, resources. So we're just scaling up the provision that we have for this particular application. So ultimately, if we were to put all this knowledge together, essentially what we're saying is that Docker can be a useful tool for us to uh, deploy and develop applications. It allows us to create environments, consistent environments in terms of software package packages and um, dependencies uh, and version controls of software. And it allows us all developers to be working from the same versions and the same software. It allows us to share environments um, and it provides ultimately flexibility. So for example, if we were going to prototype some new software, we can just draw down some of the containers or images as we know they're called. And then we can run these uh, images as containers and we can start working with these containers really quickly to build our software uh, in a consistent way, of course, and in a shared state so that we can all work from the same packages at the same time. And that ultimately is going to help us to create better software because we can effectively test more effectively and debug consistent environments. In addition to that, as we develop, we're, we can essentially build our deployment environment. So when we come across or when we need to actually deploy our application, it should be a simple case of just moving across our image over to a server and let it run as a container on the, serv on the server. And of course, there are some benefits of having layers uh, for scalability and so on, which we can uh, delve into and look at in later tutorials. Uh, but ultimately we've got a control and potential ease of development. Now, when we start thinking about different development practices, for example, continuous delivery, where we're building an application, we're constantly updating it. These type of tools can come in really handy and really be beneficial to this type of uh, delivery or development structure or principle. So hopefully now you feel as though we've established some of the main concepts of Docker in terms of containers, images, and layers, at least in general terms. So hopefully now we can answer well, what an image is, uh, what a, a layer is in general terms, and how they relate to a container. Of course, if you've still got no idea at all, then please leave a message in the 
comments section. We can answer questions. Um, if this didn't quite meet your expectations, again, just let me know. Uh, it'd be interesting to get your feedback. So hopefully now we can now move on to actually deploying Docker. So that'll be the next step, us actually uh, installing Docker. And then from there, we can start thinking about building our image and containers and so on. Thank you very much for listening again, and I hope I'll see you in the next tutorial.